welcome back to another video with Gilded Lace and Paper. Um, I know it's been a little bit since I've last done an upload. Last time I was deadly sick. Not deadly sick, I shouldn't say that. I was very sick. My husband and my baby and I got the flu or cold or whatever it is that is going around these days. It was not a ton of fun, so I don't recommend if you can avoid it. Um, in any case, uh, yes, so I sound very different, I'm sure, today, but I'm super excited to bring to you uh, this unboxing um, experience with uh, Birmingham, the Birmingham Pen Company. I am so excited for this myself because it is my first ever um, order with them directly. I have experienced, I think, one or two of their inks um, that I got as part of last year's um, ink, holiday ink swap that I hosted. Um, I really wanted to host one again this year. Unfortunately, I mean, I just am not sure if I'll be able to handle that. Uh, currently work is full on. I am also, you know, pretty pregnant and I have a toddler and it just seems like this year I haven't been that active in the community. So I'm not even sure I would get that many people who are interested in per uh, participating in my ink swap this year. So I decided maybe I'll probably table that, um, possibly to pick it up early next year uh, with maybe a Valentine's Day um, ink swap. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get us into this awesome unboxing. I had to sit there and have a good think about it because as much as many of the Birmingham ink unboxings that I have personally watched um, online, I couldn't remember for the life of me what they referred to as the certificate because it does say open parcel opposite box certificate. Um, and then obviously this very lovely stamp right here is poking out that says box certificate. So that's helpful because I was thinking it was the shipping label and I would have been dead wrong. So that means that this is the way that you're intended to open it. It was the, the part that had my shipping label. So thankfully I turned it over before I committed to that. Um, in any case, this box is super heavy. I'm so excited to see what's in it. Um, I mean, I know obviously to a degree what's in it, but um, in terms of, you know, the process of ordering, it did take a little bit of time, as I'm sure many other people you've heard say that, um, to get this parcel from them. Um, I, I believe it's just two gentlemen who run this company. I could be wrong, don't quote me. But I'm pretty sure it's just two of them. And, uh, you know, I can understand the load on them because they're, you know, doing so much in their business. And so um, I did reach out to them via email after about three weeks just to ask them if I could get an ETA on when shipping might occur because my husband and my baby and I are going out of town um, soon here. And so we didn't want, I didn't want this parcel sitting out in my mailbox because I wasn't sure if, where it was going to land. Thankfully, it actually landed on my doorstep directly, uh, so it wouldn't have been in peril, but now I know that. I didn't know that before. Um, most things go to my mailbox. So in any case, I didn't want, which is in the sun, and um, I live in California, so the sun is quite hot still at this point in the year. I think today was like 94 degrees. So obviously, you don't want a parcel like this sitting out in a box in the heat for weeks on, on end while we're away. So um, anywho, let me just... I'm taking a peek here under to see if there's anything that has personal details or information. This first card with this awesome um, uh, paper clip, which I was excited to receive, does have my address on it, so I'm just going to uh, hide that away. It also is that awesome, I just think it's such a beautiful detail that you probably have heard people say or talk about, which is, uh, you know, this is their... Um, Fright Manifest, and so it kind of, I'm not going to really show it too much because I don't, I don't want to give away what's in this package. I want you guys to be able to enjoy this uh, ink swatch and unboxing with me. Um, two really nice uh, postcards. Ooh, these are really nice and thick card stocks. So good on that end. Um, I have a friend who travels quite frequently a lot. Um, frequently and a lot mean the same thing, um, but she frequently travels and loves to send me postcards from wherever she visits. And so I am excited to be able to send her one of these as a response, even though I don't really travel as much. Um, I do try to locate some interesting and fun postcards to share with her. And uh, I, I generally always get mine from stationery stores that I visited or in the case like this, um, 
if some are sent as part of a parcel, I definitely share those out with her. So without further ado, we're gonna pull off this first layer of packing. Obviously this is a very well packaged, I'm, I'm not even gonna say that sentence because that was awful. This is a very well packed uh, parcel, so I'm really happy for that. Um, I, it's also super heavy, so I, I was definitely intrigued. I was like, good lord, what did I order? Because um, this box is super heavy. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all of these out. And I clearly went in <laughs> on my order um, and did not hesitate to get into the good stuff. But I had seen so many beautiful inks, ink swatches from, I just love all these like paper details that they include. I also, I mean, it's just, it's so thoughtful and so wonderful. And not a lot of companies that you order from these days put time and energy into their packaging. Excuse me. So I quite um, appreciate that. So anywho, um, I think these are bottles. So I'm gonna save these three for last. I'm probably gonna have to like wipe away scraps as I go. These are three smaller bottles. So, um, uh, and I remember from other people's orders that it's gonna be a mystery as to what's inside these boxes because they do not label their boxes. Um, and I've also, I think, heard that some people prefer that, some people don't. I, I would if I intended to keep these in the box, but I probably won't. But at the same time, it's such a tragedy to like, get rid of these awesome boxes so like i don't know <laughs> tbd um this is a big box i have a good idea of what this one is but i'm gonna park this one on the side and now let's get into the bottles we have ta-da tiger lily um and that is a nice big bottle there we have amber adobe nice big bottle there these bottles are bigger than I thought they would be I mean obviously I didn't bust out a ruler or whatever to figure out dimensionally what they would be corn earworm yay all right and just for the sake of speed and ease when I'm going through my swatches um, I'm just gonna pull them all out of their boxes these other smaller ones um, so we have Emerald Fusion. So I tried, because this is my first order with them, I definitely tried to get a range of colors. Um, I love a lot of different ink colors. And the only type of inks, and you know, anything from um, uh, standards, shimmers, sheens, I love them all. The only requirement that I have of an ink, of an ink is that it is not um, too light as, so as to not be able to be legible and not be able to be read. I find that I have that problem all the time with Ferris Wheel Press inks to the point where now I just I feel like I've completely cut off my uh, desire to ever want to order an ink from them that is not very obviously a saturated ink, um, a darker color. So this one is Freshwater Bog. Um, and that's not to say that I don't think that Ferris Wheel Press inks are gorgeous. They are absolutely gorgeous. The bottles, the packaging, we all know gorgeous stuff. I just find that as a fountain pen lover, as a person who actually writes and wants to be able to read what I write, I don't enjoy not being able to. And Burley Wood, last one here. So again, just clearing some space on my desk, uh, tossing some stuff to the side that I know I don't necessarily need to have out. And then last here, is I got a dilution solution. Um, so I'm hesitant and afraid to start using this, but I know that there are some inks that I have that I may want to just add a dash of this in to just see if they perform a little better. I don't know if that is something that you can do with a dilution solution that is not made by, or if the ink is not made by um, Birmingham, but we're gonna try it out, see how it goes. I'm gonna fail so no one else has to. Um, and hopefully it all works out. But you know, with those things, you have to be open-minded and you have to be aware that it may not work out how you may want it to. Um, so just bearing mind, be mind, being mindful of that is really important. So I'm gonna, to do today's swatches, I'm gonna bust out my Hobonichi Tacho from several years ago. I never actually finished using this book. And so um, I still use it now for scratching notes, 
swatching whatever I feel like doing in that particular moment on that particular day. So I'm just going to, um, first of all, grab my handy dandy postcards and prop them up behind these bottles, use the bottles as a bit of a stopper for them, push all the bottles back, and um, we will get into the swatches. This little towel I've got here came in a book box. I couldn't tell you which one. I wish I remembered, but I don't. Um, if you happen to have gotten a similar book box and, and knew where this came from, this is now my ink blotting um, uh, towel whenever I'm swatching or changing the inks in my fountain pens. Um, it is based on V.E. Schwab's book. Um, I think this was from Vicious or Vengeful or one of those, one of her series. Um, but in any case, I thought it was an awesome towel for swatching, and it's black, so or primarily black, so it's great for the use that I use it for. So that's the story on this nifty towel. To do my swatches today, I'm going to be um, using my pen for swatching. Here it is. Ta-da! The Kakamori um, dip pen. And I've got a cup of water off to the side. I'm going to, excuse me, sip water consistently because I am pregnant and I'm very thirsty. Um, so apologies for that. I'm just looking to see around my desk to see if I have anything that I can use to kind of aid with like larger swatches. Um, I've not tried that method before. I've seen plenty of other swatch videos where people have like a little, um, tiny cup or a cap of a cup that they use to kind of help with this. I don't think I have anything along those lines and so just um, forgive me while I search around, rooting around my desk. I really should have done this beforehand, but alas I did not and I do not see anything that would help. Let me check my jar of miscellaneous things. I do have a jar of miscellaneous things. If you don't, I highly recommend that you get one because they're fun to have. This, this may, this may work. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this. I'm also left-handed, so that's another reason why I've been less inclined to do anything like that in the past. So I will use this little dropper. So I've got a dropper. I've got something I'm going to use as like a round thing. And we're going to just get right into it. I'm going to go left to right. So smaller bottles first, bigger bottles uh, last. And so we're going to go with Burley Wood to start. This is, um, shoot, I really should have details about the ink type, kind, whatever, um, on hand, but I don't. So we're just going to unbox it or uncap it. I'm sorry. Look at the ink based on the cap color, which is like this brownie mustardy color and I'm just gonna grab just the hintiest hint of it in my dropper that dropper drops that's not a coherent sentence Ashley um, I think we're just gonna do that for now just gonna clean that out two three four five and drops that there and then I'm just gonna go in here and see how this goes Maybe I only need one drop. Yeah, because that came out super, super saturated. Um, or super wet. And I can't really get a great sense of the color there, so hopefully uh, this goes better. I'm also left-handed. I'm not really great with my Kakamori dip pen, so forgive me that also. I know there are plenty of other people on the internet who are great with theirs. I'm still working on it. So, um, all right, so that's too high an angle. Burning pan. Panko. And then this is Burly Wood. I also write overhanded, which, if you are close to any lefties, you know makes life just so much more difficult. Um, I'm just gonna do a couple line passes of that. All right, so 
with between this and that little uh, dab swatch I just did, you can kind of get a good sense of what the ink um, is, what it looks like. Um, it is definitely a dark color. It's definitely in the brown family. That's where I would put it um, if I had to categorize it, which I do because I'm doing this video. I'm gonna actually grab another swatch cloth and keep this one to the side for wiping off my little round cap here. Um, but yes, you get, oh my goodness, that is a gorgeous color. I just, as I'm picking up the page, I'm seeing that green sheening action happen there. And oh my goodness, I, I mean, I knew I probably should have expected that because I ordered this ink. But um, I'm still kind of shocked by it. It's a brown with a bit of a mustard undertone, if you will, and a green sheen to it. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Love it in the writing. Um, can't wait to ink this into a pen and see what the result is because I think that that is a beautiful I mean even you can see in the cap here the reflection of that green sheen uh, Absolutely gorgeous stunning color. I am already like quite satisfied just with that color um, I know that that's a little bit like getting ahead of yourself Ashley um, Ooh, this actually has a different cap type uh, so we didn't really, we, I mean, obviously we can see this is a blue or a purpley ink, um, but we're not able to examine it in from within the cap itself. So we're just going to grab a dab and I'm going to do this one on this side because again, I'm lefty. So I've got to be very careful as I go about this so as to not make a mess of everything, which, you know, happens a lot when you're a lefty. All right. And, oh, I'm just going to skip a step here. Let's swirl this around. All right. So that has a lot of, uh, it's a much softer blue. Um, it's a, it's a vibrant blue, but it's definitely got softness around the edges. It looks a little blue gray, a little bit purpley. So, uh, oh shoot, I touched the. See? Left-handed problems. I'm gonna have to try doing this a little bit underhanded. Which I'm still working on the underhanded writing. Moving him. And this is Freshwater Bob. sense of that color and I'm just gonna clean that off all right so this blue um, I would call this a vibrant blue purple or purple lavender uh, sorry blue lavender kind of color with a bit of grayness to it um, I love colors like this I just think they're so beautiful especially in the word there co, co. Um, I, I think it's it's just giving springy, happy, you know, beautiful blue, uh, what is it? Kind of like close to like a cornflower, I think, is what I usually see people call this or something similar to this color. Um, so I really like that. Um, that one I think felt a little wetter than Burley Wood, but it also could be that I just dipped deeper with my pen, uh, with my dip pen, and so I'm not really certain on that front. Um, but I do think uh, that it's a beautiful blue. Uh, I would also love to see that. I have a um, a sailor pen, the Cure Azure is the name of it, I think, um, that I would love to see that color matched up with because I think they'd be a great match for each other. This next color, Emerald Fusion, is you can see a green based on the cap. I Green is, first of all, my favorite color, so I love greens, and I will always, as much as I have probably way too many greens, I will always gravitate towards them. I will always pick them um, from any um, an ink manufacturer if it's an option. Uh, I wish I could show you my ink cup, but I, I didn't like plan to, and 
I kind of already had co other colors in the water, but just as I'm clearing out my little eyedropper there, I'm getting some really cool effects. Like that, just now when I cleared it out, it like brought out this like neon green color, which I thought was super cool from cleaning, cleaning out this color. So, uh, geez, I'm just doing these swatches super heavy. I might need to figure that out because I feel like you're not able to get a true sense of the color unless it's that light. If I'm, you know, doing ink dabs that are really pulling in a lot of that color, a lot of that saturation. So let me, let me see if this works. I'm going to recycle a little bit of this and dab some of that away so you can get a better sense. I think that was helpful um, because now you can see that's a much more gr vibrant green than it just a second ago looked. Um, so again, I'm going to turn my book a little bit and try to write underhanded burning this is emerald fusion horizontally, vertically, some swirls, and then the same kind of like deal here. Um, this ink is definitely a lot darker than I thought it would be when I ordered it, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised and happy about that because I do actually have a lot of lighter toned greens um, and not any that are like this vibrant and holy smokes does it sheen. That is a crazy sheener. Um, that actually reminds me of, uh, it's going to sound weird, but like, I feel like the color of, of flies, like, like, uh, I don't know. The body of flies has this like metallic -y green to it that I've noticed. And this color is very similar. I've never thought it was pretty before, but as a pink pen ink, it's gorgeous. Um, so I, I do appreciate that and like this color quite a lot. I really want to see what it looks like in a longer form um, writing sample to see if it continues to read almost black, but then with a hint of green, or if it comes out as a lighter green when you're writing um, with, a, with a normal pen. Um, so that is something that I'll have to report back on once I've inked that into a pen. Um, but so far, I think these are some really interesting colors. All right, so next up, we've got Tiger Lily. This is a dye-based Keystone Formula ink. Um, that's all I have to say about that because I think it's, uh, I, I haven't really used any of these before, so I don't have anything um, super intuitive to say about it um, or special. This is like a yellowy marigold color, I guess you would call it. Um, so again, I was going for variety here, so with the intention of don't pick, you know, Ashley, don't pick your standard faves, pick colors that are going to be interesting to you and um, that you're going to enjoy seeing a range of Birmingham inks come through. Um, so that is what I did. And we're going to just use the same old cap here and hopefully this swatch comes out a little, oh shoot. I got some, definitely I got some green mixed in there from the previous Emerald Fusion, so I didn't wipe off the cap well enough, actually. Um, but hopefully I just wiped that off and got a little bit of that green out there, out of there. There still is some in that swatch, so I would say that that's not 100% an accurate swatch there, so forgive me for that. Um, all right, burning. Um, pen -co. and this is Tiger Lily. All right, and then I'm just gonna add uh, my little line swatch first, actually this this way, and then I'm just gonna do some swirls. I'm going to do some lines and there you can have like a much better sense of the color there. So this color, I enjoy colors like this too. 
And the reason why, and, and if you are a fellow lefty fountain pen lover, um, I would be interested to hear if I'm the only person that has had this experience. I find that reds and oranges and yellows are the most um, left-handed friendly inks that exist because they tend to dry faster, they tend to not smear, um, and obviously as a lefty you really need that, <laughs> you need those qualities. So I look forward to seeing if that's going to be the case with this one. Um, this color reminds me of Ferris Wheel Press's uh, buttered popcorn. So from that perspective, I'm also very excited because I don't have a bottle of buttered popcorn. I had a little uh, charger sampler, sampler that I had from Ferris Wheel Press of that color and I was obsessed with it. And I don't know why I never bought a bottle. I think like at the time that I tried to order it, it was out of stock and I just never ever went back for it. But it stays in my mind to this day of one of these like yellowy orangey colors that I love. This one comes off a little more like school bus yellow, um, which like if you like that color, great. If you don't like that color, I understand. It's not for everyone, but I just love writing with these types of colors because I find them to be legible and, and yet fun and yet uh, don't have any behavioral issues that us lefties really have to navigate around. So I would definitely say that that is something that you should consider is if you are having, like for me, I find that as much as I love freshwater bog, I kind of half expect it to have um, behavioral issues for me because I know that in my experience, lots of blue inks are a no-go for me because they will smear easily. They don't set, seem to want to dry or set as fast as other colors. And so I generally don't keep a ton of blues in my uh, circulation, my collection, whatever. Um, I usually go for lots of greens, lots of reds, oranges, yellows, um, colors like that, or colors that I know or have tested to not have behavioral issues. So I'll just say that much and just say that like, if you have the same kind of problems that I do as a lefty with smearing and inks taking too long to um, dry down, that might be a direction that you may want to go in. All right. So the next one here is another Keystone Formula, dye-based ink, Amber Adobe. This one I saw in many, many, many people's uh, swatch videos and I loved it. And so I definitely made it a point to grab a bottle myself um, because I, I knew that I would really enjoy having a color like this. Um, so I'm going to grab a dab. Just one little drop. Clean out the dropper. Oh, missing a step again. I need to swirl that around. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. All right. So this one is reading very much so like um, when I was a kid, we had a house that had Mexican tile. I don't know if it has another name. I think it was just called Mexican tile at the time, but I was 13. I wasn't paying attention to that kind of thing. Um, but in any case, uh, this color reminds me of that tile. And so it's a little bit like that clay color and I really enjoy the color of clay. So uh, I find that there are not enough things that have that color and that's a shame. So I knew I would like this. Birmingham Pen Co. And this is Ambered. Adobe. And I'm gonna just do my little swatch there. Do some lines and some swirls. I can tell this ink is a lot drier, I think, than the others, but it's just such a pretty color. Um, I have a sailor, the the brown bear edition sailor. And I think I would like to try this ink in that pen because I think they'd be a good match also, just in the body. So I'm going to try that out and let you guys know uh, how that matchup goes. But I am very happy by and large with how this ink turned out uh, to look. I like that it's kind of got this lightness to it, but like if you catch it in a more saturated form, it's got like this darker edge to it, a dark brown edge. 
Um, so I like that and I hope that I get to see some of that variation in the longer form writing sample when I do one. All right, and last up, we've got Corn Earworm. This is another Keystone formula, dye-based ink. Um, and I don't think the Emerald Fusion is the only one that I got that had a shimmer to it, so that's just good to know. So I'm gonna just grab a dab, drop it in there, drop this back in there, clean this out as best as I can. My water is super green at this point, so I don't know if I'm like contaminating my samples by dipping back into this water, but we're going to assume that that's not happening <laughs> because I, I am pregnant and I don't feel like getting back up um, after a long day's work and running after a toddler. You may re can relate possibly that just don't feel like unnecessarily standing up when you don't have to. Um, so... All right, so this color is interesting. So that is, I, I don't even know what I would call that color. Um, so let's write with it and see if it reveals itself a little bit. Uh, oops, burning M and Co. And this is corn. This one I was really on the oh shoot, got my hand in there. Uh, this one I was really on the fence about when I was uh, ordering. I wasn't sure if I wanted to just try uh, this color based on the um, the ink swatch online or whatever it was, the sample, the image that represented it. But and I thought about emailing them and being like, can I maybe have something else? Um, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit to having this be a part of the order. Um, and now having seen it in real life, I want to say I should have listened to those instincts because I don't know that I like this color. It's, this is a bit strange. Um, I'm not, this is the only color in the batch that I'm very, very on the fence about. It's this kind of super muted sepia. Um, yeah, it's just a super muted sepia. I don't love it and I don't hate it, but I don't find it to be a super compelling color the way that I find, you know, with each of these other ones, there's something so interesting about the colors that stands out to me and makes me excited to ink them into a pen and try them out. This is the only color that I have not had that reaction to upon first un unbottling it. So this might be something that I, you know, use as like, hey, if you're interested in trying it, I'll bottle that up to as many, I mean, obviously I've got more of any of these colors than I'll probably ever use, so if anyone wants to sample one of these that I have, happy to share, but um, especially <laughs> corn earworm, that's a weird color. Um, that's a very weird color, that's the best I can say about that. Um, Alright, so let's take a closer look here. We've got Birmingham Penco's Burley Wood. I love that like br muddy brown color with a bit of green sheen to it um, and a bit of a yellow undertone. I think that is super interesting, great for fall. I really like that color. Um, Freshwater Bog, a beautiful like cornflower blue, I think, if you will, with some darker edging to it that I can't wait to see in a longer form swatch to see if you see that variation. We've got Emerald Fusion, which is this beautiful green with a whole lot of shimmer to it. Um, I want to see that also in a longer form writing to see if more of that black undertone comes through. Cause it loves like, in certain lights, it just it just looks black. But obviously as you like move the paper around, you get to see that green uh, to it. So I look forward to seeing that in a pen. Tiger Lily, what I call kind of like the school bus yellowy orange color or, or kind of similar to Ferris Wheel Press's butter, Buttered Popcorn. Uh, ignore my swatch there because that's got contaminated from Emerald Fusion. But a uh, beautiful color otherwise. I also am looking forward to seeing that in a in a long uh, form writing sample. Then we've got Amber Adobe, which is this, I mean, even as it's drying down now, it's looking a little bit different. You're seeing a little bit of that, like, it looks a little like salmony pink with a little bit of purple. Uh, I think along here that you definitely see in the swatch. Um, so I would absolutely adore seeing that in a long sample. 
like ASAP. I need to put that in a pen. And then last up, you've got Corn Earworm, which is just a sepia. Um, I think especially as you're looking at it in the lines, nothing is really spectacular or interesting about the ink. Uh, same is true for like the swatches, like oh, it, just, it just isn't an interesting color. However, in the word Corn Earworm that I wrote, I am very interested in that color. I do think that if I could get it to be that saturated every time I wrote with it, I actually might enjoy it. Um, I can't really tell you why I enjoyed that more than this, but yeah, that's that's about what I can say about that. So yeah, there you have it, guys. There is my first Birmingham Penco order, um, an unboxing and swatches, and you know, it's some very interesting colors were a part of this. I'm and I chose six really different ones. So I'm really glad that I went that route to just get a very good idea, a good sense for myself of what Birmingham pen, pen inks are all about. Um, I really do rate my inks in the long term based on a few things. One, of course, first and foremost, is it legible? You want to be able to read it. No matter, like no amount of pretty color in the world is going to matter if you can't read it or the people that you're writing in that ink color too can't read it. So that's the first factor. The second factor for me as a lefty is how quickly does it dry? Um, and I kind of couple that as well with like, is it a super smearable ink? As you can see, I write um, in my natural uh, uh, grasp or holding my pen, I write overhanded. So it means I scan, just by nature of that, uh, I tend to, to uh, smear my inks a whole, whole lot. So it's very important to me that it dries quickly and or doesn't smear, one of the two. Um, so that would be my second most imp important consideration. And then my third would be like easy ability to, um, easy ability to clean it out of the pen, not staining my pens, etc. That's important. Um, I don't want to damage my pens. I have some reasonably priced pens in my collection, but I also have some in like, for example, this one that is a um, limited edition only so many of these in the world. I can't replace this pen if something would happen to it. So I am very precious about this pen and I try to make sure that um, if I put anything in here, it's not going to damage my pen. It's not going to stain the barrel. It's not going to stain the cartridge, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, so that is important. Um, I would say those are my three factors um, when I'm looking at a pen ink over time. Oh, and I would say even a fourth one. A fourth one would be in the length, throughout the length of my writing with the pen, whether I write a page or a page or two pages, whatever have you, a lot of inks do have a tendency to be super saturated and great to write with for about a page. And then the second page, or as you get further down, um, it's like they dry up or they're not as saturated. And so you get like these dark sections on your page where it's very juicy and very vibrant and very legible. And then you get these super dry chicken scratchy, not great um, renditions of the ink. So that's something else that's really important to me. That is a huge pet peeve. Whenever I see that happen with an ink, that ink pretty much gets chucked out of my collection practically right away because I just hate that and I cannot stand it. It's one of those things that I've noticed heavily with Ferris Wheel Press. And again, this isn't meant to bash Ferris Wheel Press, but I'm saying that there are other inks out there, which is such an unfortunate thing to, to have to say about most of the Ferris Wheel Press inks that I've experienced is that, you know, as beautiful as the packaging is, you know, these boxes and bottles are gorgeous, but um, at the end of the day, it comes down to the experience writing with the pen. It's all about the enjoyment of writing with the ink. And for me, a lot of the quality issues that I have with Ferris Wheel Press inks take away from that experience for me. And so I would much rather have an ink that I know is a solid writer throughout the sample, throughout the however long I'm writing with it, um, and doesn't have any behavioral issues. And so one of the my favorite brands for just reliability, beautiful colors, um, amazing like payoff on the page is Waringal. Waringal inks are probably my favorite inks to date. Um, and so that's not to say I don't like other brands. I, I absolutely have plenty of inks in my collection from other brands, but I just find that as a whole, as a line, Waringal inks are by and large for me and in my experience with what I have in my collection from them, very reliable, very well behaved. Um, 
and I don't have to really worry when I pick up a new bottle of that it's, it's not a mystery meat for me where I'm just like will I like this will I hate this I don't have that concern with wearing wool wearing gold inks um whereas with ferris wool press it's like sometimes I'll see a new release and I'll be like oh my god I want that color so bad but at the same time I just know what my experience has been and at this point I'm just kind of no longer willing to play Russian roulette and hate the the payoff of the ink um, in the long term so in any case um, my next thing uh, will be you know writing with these inks over time and I plan on doing like kind of a review of them based on like as a line how do I feel about Birmingham Penco um, and the reliability of the ink and the experience writing with it based on all of those factors that I mentioned and I'll come back to you guys and I'll let you know like hey this was my experience and I realized that my experience is not going to be everyone's experience because again I'm left-handed so if you're right-handed you probably won't care about smearing or dry dry uh, fastness you know dry speed um, but for some people that is very important and for me it is like practically crucial um, so I will grade these uh, grade the, the line based on what I have and come back with you guys and give you guys some feedback and, and just let you know how I ha have found them to be over time and I'm really hoping that it's going to be you know kind of a love relationship where I'm able to grow more in my Birmingham Penco collection um, obviously I love supporting small businesses I love that there are only two guys behind this or oh, possibly I don't know if there's more um, but you know I love the idea that it is you know kind of local to the United States and that um, they just make gorgeous colors you know and the, the packaging and the quality and the care and the customer service those are all top notch to me and so that is a reason for me to want to use this line um so fingers crossed that everything goes well with these samples as i use them more and i'll come back with that verdict and let you all know how i feel i will also try to play around with this dilution solution and figure out uh what inks i might want to test out fixing with, with this and just see how it goes um and also report back on that um, i think i have a bottle in mind right now that i mean is a beautiful color but gosh darn that thing is just just does not want to write <laughs> it's just the driest thing on the planet so um i would love to try to see if i can maybe fix that a little bit um but in any case yes so thank you again for joining me today for this uh ink swatching and unboxing with birmingham penco um i really really thankful i'm thankful and grateful for you know those of you who have stuck with this channel over the last year i know i haven't been the most active uh again i have a little one uh was a first time mom it's a lot to get adjusted to and then moving and having to set up this new office and desk space so here i am i'm now you know getting into the the rhythm and the hang of it um and hopefully you know going forward you'll see a lot more of these videos a lot more swatches a lot more unboxes uh, unboxings and um, I look forward to just having you all here please give me your feedback if there's anything about this video that you love don't love wish that I mentioned please add constructive constructive feedback to the comments below I will look forward to reading those or just questions you know if you want to say hi I'm happy to interact and, and say hello and and share whatever uh, answers I may be able to offer you um, based on what you're curious about in any case, uh, thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your wherever you are in time right now, daytime, nighttime, uh, but enjoy your day, and um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.